Hey, just to start off, um, so will you bow your head, heads with me. Dear God, just uh, please help Capstan today to go according to plan, and please help me speak well and do well, and please help everybody else to do the same. Just please help the audience to listen well and be able to hear what I have to say, and um, just please help everything go according to plan. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. There's a man who lives in the mountains of Myanmar. His name is Kaya Du. Kaya, he and his family had been displaced and persecuted for many years until he finally reached his village home in the mountains. This mountain village might have brought Kaya home, but it certainly was not safe. Kaya and other villagers would have to travel half an hour to obtain drinkable water from a mountain spring. But the journey to the spring was treacherous. Kai would have to make the daily long walk where one wrong step could detonate a landmine that would not only kill or injure Kaya, but devastate his family and village as well. This is not my own story, nor did I have the pleasure to meet Kaya, but this is a story that I read while researching the field of hydrology. The story makes my heart ache, it makes me yearn to do something about the injustices that are caused because of the lack of a basic necessity. The story calls me to do more and I want to do more. But how can a teenager from Colorado make a difference in the lives of somebody like Kaya? And to tell you guys the truth, I don't know. But I do know that the field of hydrology just not only directly deal with helping people like Kaya, it also creates and solves problems that are water-based and it helps provide clean water to everybody around the world. so that people like Kaya don't have to put their lives at risk every time they need a drink. My capstone started as me pursuing a field, but it transformed into something much greater than that. I wanted to learn about the field of hydrology, and also learn how I could use it to benefit society and make it become a cleaner and safer place. Because no human should have to consume unsafe drinking water or put their lives at risk over a basic necessity. Proverbs 22, 22 through 23 states, Do not withhold good from the, those to whom it is due. It is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, Come back tomorrow, and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. We as Christians are called to serve. The best stories that I've read and heard have branched on my heart, caused me to truly want to help. And that is why I want to pursue a field like hydrology. I first want to explain to you guys what the field of action field of hydrology actually is. Base definition states that hydrology is the study of water, yet it's much more complex than that. The complexity begins with the fact that a hydrologist can be many things. You can be an oceanographer, alpine hydrologist, hydrometeorologist, heck, you can even work with drones to track the CFS movements in rivers. You're probably thinking, well, that's cool, but why is it necessary? And I have an answer for you. The planet that we live on is made up of 70% water. And if we fail to maintain and protect that 70%, then there most likely won't be anything left on Earth. Also, of that 70% of water, there's only 2.5% of which, which is actually consumable and drinkable. That means that there's 7.5 billion people that are sharing 7.5% or 2.5% of water. <clears throat> now, where we fail as humans, is when we either misuse or waste our water resources and either refuse or ignore the fact that there's plenty of people out there that are lacking a basic necessity like water. And while I was researching and finding people to interview for my capstone, I came across a man by the name of John Fulton, thanks to Mr. Sloan. John was able to give me a very successful interview, and John is also a highly intelligent engineer and hydrologist. He gained his master's from the University of Nebraska. He also was the first to track CFS movement with drones. He's worked on a various amount of other projects also. I asked John some basic questions, and luckily he gave me extremely detailed and well thought out answers. John spoke to me about what it meant to be a hydrologist, and how he was able to become such a knowledgeable and trustworthy leader in the field of hydrology. The most striking thing that John told me was the necessity of branching out and networking. John told me that net networking was not only 
necessary for job security, but also gaining a job. John said that nobody trusts a fresh green hydrologist out of college because they've never heard of your name before. <clears throat> Luckily, after interviewing and talking to John, and the fact that John gave me a very successful interview, I understood this and was able to really hold on to it. The interview also gave me a better understanding of what a hydrologist does on a daily basis. As I continued on through the beginning of my capstan experience, I realized how truly difficult it was to become connected with different organizations or companies that deal directly with hydrology. I reached out to over 10 different organizations and companies hoping to complete a service project for them, and every single one of them either turned me down or refused. This was extremely difficult to cope with, because first off, when you're trying to put in the effort and try and understand the potential job field that you may be entering, and it is impossible to get connected with companies, it upsets you and makes you wonder whether it's the field that you should be pursuing. Sadly, I ended up not completing the service project the first semester of my capstone. This really stung me because I set out to help people like Kaya, but I wasn't even given the chance to help. During this time, I had a terrible cloud over my head. This cloud was the feeling of rejection. This cloud caused me to fall into a dark place that I've never experienced before. This cloud caused past wounds to be opened up that I didn't even realize I had. I felt worthless, broken, and useless. I felt if I was stuck, I felt if I was trapped between the lies that I was feeding myself and the heavy weight of my senior year. People started to me that I was changing and that they missed the happy Davis, but I didn't know how to be happy. How could I be happy when everything I looked at in the future that brought me dread or anxiety? I just wanted to give up and leave it all behind and float through the rest of my senior year with the least amount of pain and effort as possible. Yet, for some reason, I didn't give up and I tried not to float. I realized that all this adversity was teaching me something that God wanted me to learn. All the hurt and pain that I was feeling and the heavy weight of my senior year was hanging over my head was teaching me the virtue of perseverance. Teach me to fight through everything that I was dealing with and try my best to complete my senior year in my capstone that would not only satisfy me, but also God. Somehow, even though I was going through one of the toughest times of my life, I was still able to invest in learning about how hydrology and Christianity coexist. Psalms 24 1 says, The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world, and all who live in it. As I looked into the field of hydrology and into the Bible, I saw the pieces starting to connect. I want to take you to an example that took place in Silverton, Colorado, where the Gold King's mine was being excavated and cleaned when a terrible burst happened that spilled tons on tons of toxic waste into the struggling gold metal water that is the Moss River. It resulted with a devastating loss of aquatic life which not only affected the surrounding ecosystem, but the tourism business around the Animos. But the people that cleaned this massive mess were hydrologists. They were able to revive the fishery that was so severely damaged by cleaning the contaminated water. Yet even with the hydrologists' work, the Animos has not made a full, <coughs> full return to its former glory as a gold metal fishery. This specific example shows us how hydrology and Christianity go hand in hand to preserve God's creation. Good because God calls us to protect and maintain this earth. And without the hydrologists that worked at the Amos, the road itself would be entirely destroyed and it would be currently unsustainable for life. But because those hydrologists did their job and worked to maintain God's creation, they were able to contain a terrible catastrophe that could have wreaked a whole lot more havoc on the ecosystem and God's creation. Even after everything that I accomplished first semester, and as the second semester of my senior began, I felt the same cloud of rejection that was present earlier in the year, which was eating away at me. But I strived to invest in my capstone so that I could potentially help people like Kaya. While searching and contacting places that I could serve, I eventually stumbled across the company named Healing Waters, located out of Golden, Colorado. 
I contacted a woman by the name of Irene Wilson. Irene told me about the service opportunities that they had for me, which included working on water filtration systems that were built on location. After these systems were completed by Healing Waters, they would be then sent out to countries like Haiti or Mexico. Their goal is to bring safe drinking water to communities that don't have access to a clean water source. When I was walked into Healing Waters, I was surprised to see a tiny office with a little back room. I expected to find a larger operation that was manufacturing smaller water filtration systems. But what I actually found were these massive water filtration systems that use central filtration to filter out the bacteria. Throughout my service, I was given a tour of the company and the basis of the work they do there. I began by laminating manuals for the larger water filtration systems. And then I was actually able to work on the water filtration systems. I started out by connecting the tubing that ran from the pressure gauges to the actual water tanks that would purify the water. I had to cut the plastic tubing and guide it through the system, making sure that either side was corrected, connected, corrected, connect, correctly, <laughs> correctly connected, or the machine would not function properly. I also worked on connecting the aluminum bases to make sure that the structure itself was sturdy enough to complete the job. I was overjoyed by my service. I was able to help an organization that actually brought clean water to the people that needed it the most. I felt that I actually contributed something bigger than myself or my capstone. It really led me to believe that hydrology can be deeply connected by something more than protecting God's creation. I began to see beauty in hydrology that I hadn't before. I realized that I could truly serve people as a hydrologist. and I didn't just have to focus on the environmental side. I realized that I didn't have to travel to another country or do a mission trip to serve people. I could stay in Colorado and do something as menial as test wells, and that was helping and serving people. This doesn't mean that I wouldn't leave the country or go on a mission trip, because people like Kaya deserve better and they deserve to be treated well, and they deserve to have a water resource and water access. But realizing that the simplest task that a hydrologist does on a daily basis actually helps people, that brings me a sense of peace and relief. I was worried that a science-based field like hydrology would be secluded from humanity if they're unexpectedly intertwined. Hydrologists work every day of their lives to bring about useful things to humanity. It doesn't matter if it's a oil, gas, water, or a clean lake to swim in, because everything they work for brings about a cleaner and safer humanity. I learned a lot from people like John Fulton, Irene Wilson, and Mr. Klima, but I don't truly know how I was changed personally, and I struggled with this. Throughout my journey through senior year, I realized that I just hadn't changed much, and that disappointed me. I thought capstone would affect who I was. It just didn't. I thought it would shape me and lead me into the future, but it simply just did not. I wish I could say it differently. I wish I could stay, stand up here and tell you guys that my capstone was an amazing experience that really benefited my life. But my capstone was actually something that filled my life with dread and anxiety. I didn't look forward to the next component or the next journal entry. I simply wished to skip over it. In its own way, Capstone benefited and absolutely ruined my senior year. <laughs> it helped me understand the field I've been going into and how I can be beneficial to humanity using it. But maybe, just maybe, that's the purpose of Capstone. <laughs> maybe it's meant to push us in a way that we've never been pushed before. Maybe it's meant to challenge us to a point where we have to decide whether it's worth the time to pursue. I can say without a doubt that it was worth the time. It may have been one of the hardest things that I've done. It may have pushed me to my own limits, to the point where I wanted to give up. But it also taught me the virtue of moderation. Capstone showed me the importance of having balance in your life. I realized that if I fail to address my own mental and physical health, then I also fail at everything else that surrounded me. Without balance, I was guaranteed to finish poorly. I had to learn to successfully balance my time and take into account what is truly the, has the most importance. Maybe Capstone wasn't at the top of my list, but that's okay. 
because I realized that being consumed by something like capstone can only leave you drained and empty. You're probably all wondering how this relates to hydrology, and to tell you the truth, it doesn't. But that's the beauty of it. <clears throat> Mr. Spector and Mr. Butler asked us what affected us the most. And I can tell you that it wasn't reading about poly water in the capstone book I had, but it was the experiences along the way that affected me the most. Now, as I began to close out my senior year, I realized that all the trials and tribulations I faced were used to teach me perseverance. I realized that capstone itself taught me moderation. I realized that hydrology was the field that I wanted to pursue for the rest of my life. I realized that I want to be able to guarantee that people like Kaya will always have access to a clean water source. I realized that I wanted to complete my job as a Christian hydrologist. I realized that I wanted to help Purina become a cleaner and safer place through hydrology. But I can only do this if I continue to pursue hydrology as something more than a career. Thank you.